Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mech Tech, and today I'm going to be testing some different plates on the Mons Geek M1. Now, my Mons Geek is still completely stock, I have not done any modifications to it, so in the process I'm going to do some slight modifications, namely Force Break Mod. If you're not familiar with Force Break Mod, it's basically applying some thick tape, and in this situation I'm going to be using... Um, this uh, medical bandage tape because it, it does have some girth to it. Now you can also use the um, the little pads that come for screw and stabilizers. A lot of people like using those and those will work just as well. But also I'm going to be testing out, um, Mons Geek was kind enough to send me out the FR4 plate as well as the M1 palm plate. So at the beginning of this video, if I edited it properly, you heard a stock sound test with um, Gazoo U4Ts and this is the uh, Akko Black and Bronze ASA keycap set. So you can probably hear there's a little bit of ding or ping in there. Um, it's not super loud, but it definitely can be heard. So the force break mod should help eliminate if not all of it, the majority of that ping. So what we're going to be doing is testing out the different plates as well as doing that force break mod. I do have other mods intended for this, but I just kind of, I just want to get rid of the ping. I know we're not, you know, fully stocked, but I've already done in my original review video as well as this one, I've already done good stock sound tests. So I think just adding the force break in there and trying to figure out what it sounds like with the different plates is a good idea. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, I just wanted to show the last three I'm pulling out. Now, when we're dealing with the Temu sockets, it's a whole different story, but when we're dealing with the majority of hot swap sockets that we find, find nowadays on many keyboards, um, there really doesn't have to be a struggle to pull them out. I see too many times people breaking uh, this part, the window, um, or just the, that little opening right there. Honestly, just making sure that you have both the bottom and the top clip engaged, and then doing a little rock back and forth, not too much of a rock, you're not trying to break the pins off in there, but it just makes sure that it's released from the plate because the plate's really what's holding it down. The clips here at the top and the bottom of the switch, that's what's holding that into place and they're very light clips. That's why you may have noticed that some of the keycaps actually pulled it off. Now granted, we are dealing with a polycarbonate plate, so they're gonna have a lot 
looser of tolerances and allow for the switch but to to come off easier but the main part of removing a hot swap switch is to ensure that you have both of those clips and then you don't need to pull that hard you can just gently pull it out and gentle is best when dealing with these hot swap sockets remember they're only on there with two little pieces of solder on either end so just something to think about all right so here we are um, with the uh, the mines geek and all right first let me go ahead and remove the knob yeah I don't think I've even did I have I opened this no wait a minute I don't even remember this came I had to install the stabilizer ah I don't even remember ah, too many keyboards too little time so let's see what size hex we need in here that's it right there go ahead and open this baby up Now always when you're using little power screwdrivers like this make sure that you have the best fitting bit on um, especially when dealing with um, Phillips head screws uh, there a lot of times these these screws are are soft and if you have one that it when it jumps you feel that that's actually it skipping over where it lands into and enough of those skips can strip the head of the screw so just a little little tip from your uncle mark these not anodized All right, so we've got top screws and we've got bottom screws. Three of each. Now, let's see. All right, we lift the top up. Again, I don't recall if I've been in here before, so I'm taking a look. Actually, I think I have. I think I have. It hasn't even been that long since I got this, but I've done so many keyboards since. I mean, for 99 bucks, you just can't beat this via uh, aluminum 75% I mean it is it's just I have been using this uh, used a few times as my daily and despite that minimal ping I I didn't really notice it and once I got into working I was fine I just kept on trucking now I did I think the first time I loaded it up with some MA keycaps and the MA profile I mean I can use but it's a little wonky to me, so I switched to SA, which I prefer much better. Now, I've also heard that there is a need to put a little bit of tape in with these side slots, so I'm probably gonna go ahead and take care of that here today as well. But, first thing I wanna do, is go ahead and take this up. Well, we have a daughter board. Oh. oh yeah, that's right, it did come with a piece of tape if I recall correctly. So, and then this sheet here. I don't think that's the best way to do that tape mod. So, I mean, JSD connectors, some are easier or harder than others, but I hate to keep bringing this up, but, um, and I've still got a video to publish, but I'm at my fifth V65 unit and still can't deal with the JSC connectors. This is fine, I mean, this is a little bit weaker, but it works and it stays connected. Wires don't fall out of the connector. I like that. <laughs> I do have to unscrew the plate on the PCB so it looks like the screws come from underneath. Go ahead and set. Way too many stuff on my lap right here. All right, there does not appear to be any studs in here. So I'm gonna assume that it just attaches with switches. Yeah, slight bit of damage, but it's on the underside. So no biggie. All right, so let me go ahead and unscrew these guys. I'll make sure I'm not doing, all right, one, two, three. Make sure I'm not, oh, helps if I have the right tip. Go ahead and get that out. Go ahead and take out the six screws holding together the plate and the PCB. All 
All right, and there we have the PCB as well as the foam. So, I also have the uh, IPX foam on this. So, set this aside. I do do know I have some extra gaskets, but I'd have to go dig the box out. So I'm just going to go ahead and borrow these gaskets off of here. So yeah, this is the PC plate. This one actually has studs. This is the stock plate that comes with it. And here we are with the M F4, FR4. All right, it fits just nicely over the, um, the switches. And we got the pad in there. So let's go ahead and make sure. I guess we can go ahead and just put them all in here. And make sure I'm gonna go ahead and get the corners. So some plates use studs and screws to keep them connected, but even in that situation, you could still use um, the actual switches as anchors because once there's enough switches in there, going to have a good but usually it's best to start with the four corners all right that one's in and once you snap at least four corners in, and sometimes you know a couple more like the space bar the middle function row just helps to give it that much more grasp but yeah you're using the switches the switches are are doing double duty as they are holding the plate and the PCB together and but that usually tends to allow for a little bit more flex the only downside is if there's too much flex switches can actually pop out so that's a balance you'll have to decide every every keyboard is slightly different when it comes to that so obviously figure out what you like all right so see now we have what six eight uh, seven switches uh, in and we can tell that you know it's it's holding together so let's go ahead and throw these socks on all right before we put on the rest of those switches let's go ahead and do our force brakes mod our fork force brake mods I'm also going to add a little piece of tape on the inside here to see if I can tighten this uh, gold bar so that it doesn't because it does have a little bit of looseness so we're gonna do the same thing just add a little bit of tape to, to make it tighter um, and I'll and prevent it for, from rattling and creating some ping as well so this stuff is super sticky it likes to even stick to itself what I'm gonna do throw that away. yeah it sticks especially to skin which makes it not too easy to work with. I am gonna go ahead, let's do one strip. All right, it's a little wider than I wanted. Yeah. So what I'm basically doing is taking little square pieces as you see, they don't have to be perfect. They're gonna be hidden inside of the case. But I'm placing them on either side of each screw point on the bottom and the top case. What this is going to do, it's going to help basically create almost like a dampening gasket. So where the metal isn't hitting directly against metal, it has something in between to soften that metallic blow. This one's gonna have to be a little skinnier for that corner, but I can actually just go ahead and move you over here so I don't have to try to cut you and ruin you. All right, let's cut another strip. Although this tape is hard to work with, it. in my opinion, it, it does the best in a lot of situations, especially with force break. Um, but even a couple of layers of painter's tape will work if you don't have this handy. So as long as you're creating some sort of cushion between Two pieces of metal, it should be okay. I'm gonna try to prevent it from going outside of the border of the plate or of the case so that it's not sticking out. Put that a little too far up. Let's try that again. 
Obviously we do not want to cover the hole as that could cause the screw to bind and actually strip or even strip out the hole. So we don't want to impede the screw at all. That looks pretty good for the top frame. Now let's go ahead and take care of the bottom frame as well as these bars. So for these bars, obviously we want to keep the tape on the inside. Let's see if we can just do... Basically, I'm just finding the best way to put tape on here to where not only will it serve as a wedge, but it also won't come off. One of the things I do notice is that it needs to be put in evenly. Oh, I think we got it. Ah, we got the tiniest little edge showing. Yeah, of course. Press it into that wedge. And press it down. All right. Trying to get, like I said, the best fit to where it's going to go in and not pull the tape out, but also find a nice, comfortable wedge in there. All right. So we try to do it evenly. One top and the bottom at the same time then push down. Uh, I think we've got it. All right. Yeah. So none of that's going to stick outside of the case. Awesome. And yeah. So we can hear that one doing it. So let's go ahead and take care of that one. The same way we did this one. I'm doing this so that it's as close to the bar as possible. Hopefully it won't pull up. Let me squeeze it in. All right, this seems to be well on there. Let's see if we can get on the first shot. Now get it evenly. Like I said, try to end, slide both the top and the bottom in at the same time. That seems to do the trick. Yeah, that's on there. And nothing is peeking out. It's fine if it peek, peeks out from the top because that's going to be on the inside. So it would be nice, I mean, maybe for the next revision, if there was LEDs here and you could replace this with like, say, acrylic inserts for doing, um, so that it, it would uh, diffuse the light. I think that would be pretty cool. Because um, I honestly, I, I think this board stock sounds better than the GMMK Pro. And I don't think there'd be many that, that would disagree with me on that. But obviously, uh, we need to do some some improvements, which is what we're doing here. All right, so now let's go ahead and finish up the force break mod. The thing is here, you're trying to balance putting, you know, a good amount of gasket tape and not, you know, creating any issues with the case not wanting to shut. So you don't want to go off and put in like a millimeter thick piece of foron, poron and you put it on either side of the screw hole because that's where it gets screwed down. So that's where most of the um, the reverberation is going to be caused if there's nothing there to stop that reverberation, that is. Um, like I said, I'm going to come later and do more mods than just this, um, this, this plastic. I mean, this plastic sheet actually, you'd be surprised, but I think polyfill actually will work better. And in the end, who knows, I may do a silicone pour. Um, have I done an aluminum silicone pour? I want to say I have, but I can't think of it. I really got to start keeping track of these. <laughs> just adding a couple extra pieces and not on top, just on the side, so it should even that out. All right, so it looks like we've got the case mod taken care of. I'm not going to be putting the tape on. I'm just going to be putting this on. So this basically just sits oh, like this. 
So now, since we have the plate out, I'm going to go ahead and just load up all the switches so I can support the back of the hot swap PCB, and then we'll get to rebuilding it and see how it sounds. All right, so there we are. We have all the switches in place. Um, go ahead and get this connected. Boom. And that's how I like JST connectors to work. All right, I want to make sure that it's in there. And this bottom foam is not binding anything up. So you want to make sure that these gaskets are sitting into their holes or their slots, whatever you'd like to call them. Right. Now let's make sure that this fits on nicely. Alright, yeah. So we're good. Let's go ahead and set this upside down. We have the long ones for the back. shorter ones for the front. Obviously let's not mess them up with the plate screws. Uh, it would be hard to. These are hex much longer. So let's go ahead and switch out this hex bit. And hold it closed. I like to do what's called a candy corner. I don't tighten it all the way but I start with one in one corner and I go to the complete opposite corner. Once I know it's down there, another opposite, opposite, then center and center. All right. So plates in there, the side plates, and they are not vibrating. Good. All right. I just want to put a gold knob on there. Do I have one? kind of like it. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and load up the key caps and then come back and we'll do the sound test with the FR4 plate. All right, here we are. Now I did change out the knob, but that shouldn't make a difference for the sound test. Although now that I've done the force break mod, I think I'm gonna have to come back at the end and put the PC plate back on and see how that sounds, but that metal ping has definitely gone away. So let me go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of this one, and I will be back in another video where I will go ahead and change out to the palm plate, and then I'll make another video where I put the PC plate back in, I'll do a sound test with that, then I'll come back on that video and do all the mods and then decide on which plate I'm going to stick with at that point though very likely to be either the PC or the POM though I, I really do like the PC but let's see how the POM performs so I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the stock sound test of this Monskeek M1 it's using Yazoo U4T switches um, and it's using the Akko ASA black and bronze keycap set uh, which is a double shot and we have done the force break mod and also tightened up the plates on the side so they won't rattle and won't ping and we have also replaced it out and we're doing this with the fr4 plate so until the next transmission which will be soon i'm going to do these videos and just i'm trying to release shorter videos i don't know if that'll help i think some of my videos tend to get a little long although i, I do get a lot of uh feedback that people appreciate that because I get into detail but I'm trying to avoid going off on rants so much at least rants that are not relevant to the particular 
video I'm making at the time. But I appreciate all feedback that you guys got going for me. I, it, it's helping me to make my channel better one step at a time. And if you guys did enjoy this, I hate to do this, but a click of a like or subscribe helps my channel out a bit. Uh, a big bunch, you know, in exchange for that little effort. So if you think I've earned your subscription, I'd love it if you click like and subscribe below. But otherwise, let me know what I can do to earn your following. Because I just want to help. And like I said, I'm working on a series which is going to cover the basics of mechanical keyboards. And I'm going to be building several keyboards, also doing different mods, also showing different methods of lubricating switches, which is a big form of contention, getting into interference, getting into north versus south, all of that. And I'm going to go, basically I'm going to have an overview video that go, goes very high level on it, but each section is going to have a more in-depth video where I jump into it and you know get nitty gritty with that particular topic so and if you guys have any suggestions for things to me to, for me to cover uh, because i'm going to put the majority of the series together and run it by uh, good friends in the community to make sure that i'm not missing anything misstating anything and just to make sure that i'm being as well-rounded as possible most of this is going to be based off of questions that i see on a very regular basis on our weekly help thread on our budget keeps so again I'm going to go ahead and leave you guys with the sound test. Uh, the beginning was stock with the PC plate. and Just just so you guys can have a reference point. This is still stock, though I did take off the tape that was on. I don't know why I put it that way. But I took off the tape and I just left the foam on there. And we did the force break mod for both the plates and the case. So until next transmission, keep calm and keyboard on.